How are we going everyone? Been out in the orchard today harvesting some fruit. Uh, apples, plums, not pears yet. Uh, what else is it? Almonds as well. So we're getting all that happening. It's great to be able to get some fruit after a couple of years. And I also came out to the uh, olive area here. We've got 20, 24 olive trees here, two rows. Um, you'll notice, you'll see that the one on the right side has got a larger growth on it compared to this side here. It could be for any sort of reasons, but there's a couple in particular that have actually grown a lot more than the rest of the trees here. And I'm thinking to myself, back then when I first planted, it was waterlogged, so I had to pull those trees up a bit so they can get a bit of air. And in return, I'm thinking they've basically have grown better because of that initial reaction that I had with the waterlogged soil, creating a bit of a moat and getting the drainage. But on closer inspection, something more sinister was going on, folks. Yes. I had suckers coming up, and then when I had a close look, I had the actual bamboo cane. I've taken it out, but have a look at the mark here. See that mark there? That's where the soft tie was, and that's the soft jolly tie that we use, which is really gentle on the plants. But when there's no more room, it becomes a tourniquet and starts to choke or ring bark the tree. And it puts a little bit of stress into the tree, obviously a little bit more than a little bit of stress, and it puts on some more growth. Now, normally they'd be fruiting, but these are young trees, so I reckon in return, it's actually trying to put some growth on and hopefully flower again before it dies. Now, that's not a bad one. I'll show you one that's actually a lot worse. Look at this, look at that. Look how deep it is. There's the actual tie that I had, and that's quite firm now, it's quite rigid. See, it's still holding its shape, and that was choking inside all the way there, like that, and I had to basically take it off. Now, folks, this can kill a tree if you don't take them out in time. And this is a soft tie, so this gives a little bit of flex there to the plant so it doesn't cut into it too hard. If this was wire or that green uh, plastic coated uh, wire that we use for tying plants, or the labels that you get on your trees, if that was around here, I guarantee you that wire would have cut right in through the cambium layer and basically ring bark the tree, causing it to die. Now this one is reacted really well. It's strong as nails and tough as nails, I should say. Um, and it's it's doing fine. You need to get out there, folks. You know, here I am, I'm, I'm claiming my, my mistake here, meaning I didn't get out here early enough to actually take all these off. And I just noticed there's one over there as well, a younger tree or a smaller tree in size that looks like it's got a ring bark going on as well. This is not as bad, folks. Look, but actually, if I go around here, it's actually cutting in there. It's starting to see the marking. Well, that's because the sun's not shining on it, but that will choke it, so I'm going to have to get this one out as well. I didn't bring my secateurs. I can slide this off. There we are. Get that off. A little bit of room. Slack. So if you've got trees that have been tied up from young and you haven't gone out to visit them because the little bamboo stake has been dwarfed in size because the tree's grown so much, it's so easy to forget that. Have a close look to make sure you haven't got any ties wrapped around the trunk. Even if the stake's been taken away, sometimes these can be left behind and they will um, ring bark your tree and kill it off. Have a look at this space here. So we've got a couple of hundred trees here, uh, some figs and all things growing really well. For those who've been following me, this is, well, we've been here just on four years. I planted it after the first year, so they're on to their third year now in springtime. That'll be the, the start of the third year growing. So I reckon we're doing pretty well. What we're going to do here, because a lot of people have emailed saying, where's the bark gone? And yeah, it's disappeared. Uh, I'm not going to fight that one with the weeds because they're always going to grow back. And, you know, there's a network going on down below. They're far greater than we could ever possibly understand. So rather than mean trying to disturb and disturb the entire base there and constantly uproot systems around there, and I know they do suck the food out of the ground and it's a bit of a competition between trees and weeds. I get all that. But I, I'm in the mind that I'm just going to brush cut this back down and expose as much of the moss below as possible. Also then do a slasher spray, which is the herbicide that I use. It's, um, it's a contact spray, surface spray only. It doesn't travel through, it's non-systemic. It's, so it doesn't travel through the plant sap flow. It doesn't work its way down. It just burns it off. And they may bounce back pretty quickly. It may be a second application. But a few weeks after that, and this will be in winter, not so much now. I don't want that growth happening. I want the spring growth to come on, not so much the flowers, because I want to create the shape. I'm going to compost these really well. And a quick one just before I sign off on it, it's the compost that we're going to bring out, uh, that we're going to top dress these with. But they were also using, and this is the bark, or well, I call it a bark, but it's, you know what I'm thinking I'm going to call this? Now it's discolored here, 
but I'm going to be looking at calling it black magic or something like that because it's so rich in carbon, it's, it's breaking down, it's, it's like biochar. Come around here because that's been exposed. This is a sample that was given to me a few weeks ago and I purposely leave it out here to weather to see how it goes. And you can see I dug a hole in here and it's look, it's activated. That is telling me it's breaking down. It's alive. This is a beautiful recycled green waste. Um, and I'm going to go with the word organic on this one here, or as close to, because there's no herb, there couldn't be any herbicide spray in this product here because the plants were alive when they were dug out, unless it's just weeds that were pulled out. You know, we're going to do the research and make sure that we haven't got any residual of any sort of toxins in here. Uh, and there are SDS uh, reports on this. So we'll test all that out. And, and, and all being great, we're going to put the compost at the bottom, our superfood on top with black grit through it all, and then top dress it with the mulch. So that's in the coming, I won't say weeks, coming months, folks. And if you're going to be top dressing your garden beds and fruit trees, get some superfood into it. Um, they're on in 30 litre bags, heavily discounted. We're still going through our trial period and our 3 AW weekend. We do drag it out till Monday midnight because a lot of people don't get a chance to go shopping online. Check it all out, thesilliesgarden.com. Use the coupon code 3 aw to get up to 85% off all the great gardening products we have. That's thesilliesgarden.com from Eva Silly, Maresi.